Six females in custody after attack on 14-year-old. Six females aged 15 to 52 are currently in police custody awaiting charges for their involvement in a mob attack on a 14-year-old girl in Clarendon on Saturday. The genesis of the incident is reported a link to a love triangle, although the victim herself was not directly part of the romantic dispute. According to Superintendent of Police in charge of Clarendon Division, the necessary investigations are underway to see that those involved can be charged. They are in custody and the necessary due diligence is being carried, Russell stated. He also decried the actions of those involved in the mobbing. The genesis of this incident would have been from a love triangle, and although the 14-year-old herself wasn't a part of this love triangle, she has a family member who is involved and as such she was targeted. Actions like these are despicable, and it can't be that grown-up persons who are supposed to be setting examples for the younger ones or the persons that are involved in beating a child was stated. He is also encouraging parents and adults to protect their children. She received serious head injuries but was released from hospital. However, we are awaiting the medical report to determine the seriousness of the charges. Six detained, six guns and 80 rounds of ammunition seized in Clarendon. Six people detained and six guns, along with over 80 rounds of ammunition, were seized during targeted operation in Clarendon on Wednesday morning. The Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigation Sprint CTOC conducted raid in Oliver Gardens, Maven, and the Farm Currency in New Ground. Head of the Clarendon Police Division, Senior Superintendent Carlos Russell, said the operations are part of a targeted effort to clamp down on illegal firearms and criminal activities in the area. The identities of the individuals in custody have not yet been released and the specific types of firearms recovered are still being ascertained. The joint operation was carried out in the farm community. Joint operation with ETAC, the State Center and Area 3. Several targeted operations were carried out in which six firearms, six illegal firearms were seized and 83 assaulted rounds of ammunition. Six persons were taken in custody and are at our lockup while the investigation continues. And this operation is part of our response to gang activities that are happening in the Era 3 division, um, as also to respond to threats that were issued earlier from gang members who had double fatal in the St. Elizabeth division. So we are continuing these operations and we are continuing to talk with the gangster and we will go in after the gun. Wife taken into custody in connection with husband's killing. The Chilani police were up to late Tuesday afternoon questioning Sylvia Montague Brown in connection with the gruesome killing of her husband, 59-year-old fisherman David Brown, whose body was discovered near the Wakefield home on Saturday morning. Accompanied by her attorney, she was taken into custody of the Falmouth Police at 10 a.m. on Tuesday. Cops had given her until noon to turn herself in. Before walking into the police station, Montague Brown had not been seen in the public since her husband's body was discovered. Cops initially named her as a person of interest, but upgraded her to a suspect on Monday, the same day her brother, six-year-old gardener, Lester Judge Montague was charged with murder in connection with the killing. On Saturday, Brown's lifeless body was found in bushes close to their matrimonial home he and his wife shared. His body had multiple wounds, was wrapped in a white bed sheet. It was discovered on a sheet of zinc close to the couple's house. Commander of the Chulani Police Division, Deputy Superintendent of Police, Winston Milton, says that Brown were engaged in domestic dispute on Friday night. Threats were allegedly made during the facet and Money Brown reported the incident to the police. Cops visited the couple's home in an effort to quell the disturbance. However, sometime after 7 Saturday morning, the police were again contacted by residents who reportedly heard a commotion coming from the couple's house. Neighbors said the Browns frequently fought. Wholeness says crime and violence affecting mental health of citizens. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the state of crime and violence in the country is affecting the mental health of citizens. Speaking at an annual National Day of Prayer on Wednesday morning, Mr. Holness recounted an interaction with a citizen who he said urged him to do something about the issues. 
the Prime Minister said the interaction demonstrated to him that mental health and overall well-being of citizens are being impacted negatively by crime and violence. He reiterated that the issues must be addressed in a non-partisan way. On New Year's Eve night, I met a lady who said to me, Prime Minister, you have to do something about the crime. And I said to her, you know, this year, murders are down 7.5%. Murders are down. I said to her, you know, this year, serious crimes are the lowest they have been in 22 years. About 4,500 compared to sometimes as high as 9,000 reported serious crimes. And she still said to me, Prime Minister, you need to do something about the crime. That was very profound because it says that though our economy is doing well, though we are building the infrastructure, though the statistic murders are going down, violent crimes, serious crimes are going down, how people feel, what they are being exposed to, what comes across on their social media, it is having an impact on our mental health. It is having an impact on how we perceive our well-being. And that is, that is dangerous. So when I said we're going to have to treat with this issue of peace in a deliberate way, in a non-political way, it is something that we have to join up together to treat with peace because our society is in conflict. We have personal conflicts, we have conflicts at the workplace, conflicts in the community. When we analyze this, the murder statistics, you know what we find? Gang murders have gone down. Interpersonal crime resulting in murder is going up. It tells a story that personal conflict is resulting in the violent loss of life. Farmer charged for allegedly shooting two men, one fatally in Westmoreland. A Westmoreland farm who is accused of killing a man and injuring another in a gun attack on Rickett Street, 7 Alamar, in the parish on Saturday, December 30, has been arrested and charged. Charged with murder and wounded with intent is 25-year-old Tommy McFarlane of Ricketts Avenue, 7 Alamar, Westmoreland. He is accused of killing 27-year-old Kemal Wilson, otherwise called Moy. Reports from the 7 Alamar police are that about 10.55 p.m., Wilson and another man were standing on the roadway when a black Toyota Voxy motor car drove up and McFarlane and another man opened gunfire at the men. Both men were taken to hospital where Wilson was pronounced dead and the other man admitted for treatment. The following day, McFarlane was apprehended during a targeted raid and was taken into custody where he was subsequently charged. His court date is being finalized. You take academic staff to suspend issuing grades amid compensation demand. Students at the University of Technology, Jamaica, are to face delays in receiving grades as lecturers, have decided to halt issuing results as they press the government on unresolved salary issues. In a statement, the University of Technology Academic Staff Union said it has reluctantly decided to act in response to the government's failure to provide a compensation review proposal. Consequently, the members will suspend all grades entries for semester 1, 2023-2024, until we receive the compensation review proposal for review and consideration, it stated. This decision was not taken lightly, but it is necessary step to emphasize the urgent need for the compensation review to be completed, the union continued. The University of Technology Academic Staff Union represents over 300 academic staff at the university. It said it remains open to continued dialogue and urges the government to reconsider its position acknowledging the importance of fair compensation in fostering a positive and productive work environment. It further stated that it hopes that this action will point to the government to prioritize the well-being of the staff and expedite the delivery of the compensation review proposal. Three teen boys charged following ammunition seizure. Three teenage boys were arrested and charged following the seizure of several rounds of ammunition, which police allegedly found in their possession in Bedward Gardens Crescent, Augustown in Kingston on Monday. The boys, who are between the ages of 15 and 17, have been charged with unauthorized possession of ammunition. Reports from the halfway tree police are that about 1.58 a.m., lawmen were on patrol in the area when the three boys were seen acting in a manner that arose their suspicion. The boys were approached and searched, and a transparent bag retrieved. The bag was found to contain 12 cartridges, police stated. The boys were arrested and subsequently charged.
425 road deaths in 2023, says RSU. The Road Safety Unit, RSU, is reporting that 425 road users were killed in 384 fatal crashes in 2023. That number includes 56 females and 369 males. By comparison, 79 females and 409 males were killed in road crashes in 2022. Based on the latest statistics, 2023 marks the fifth consecutive year that death toll on the nation's road have surpassed the 400 mark. Last year, 488 road users were killed in motor vehicle crashes, 487 died in 2021, 433 were killed in 2020, and 440 died in 2019. Of significance is that 63 fewer road users were killed in 2023 than in 2022, a 13% reduction. Fatal crashes were down 10% last year. The trend remains the same among road users, with motorcyclists marking up the bulk of the fatalities. 135 were killed in 2023 compared to 142 last year. Additionally, 75 pedestrians were killed, so too 74 drivers of private motor cars, 10 passengers of commercial motor vehicles, 24 pedal cyclists, 18 pillion passengers, 21 passengers of public passenger vehicles, and 52 passengers of private motor cars. The RSU said the vulnerable road users, pedestrians, pedal cyclists and motorcyclists, and pillion riders combined accounted for 59% of road users killed last year. Overall, males account for 87% of the road deaths, with females accounting for the remaining 13%. Driven by motorcyclist death, the parish of Westmoreland accounted for most road fatalities with 14% followed by St. Catherine with 13%. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.